Welcome to Budget Outlaws. Today I'm going to show you how you can do your own vehicle alignment using tools you probably have laying around the house. I've been doing alignments for the last 45 years, both professionally and just to save a buck. Home alignments depend on a lot of factors, so it's easy to get it wrong. If you're doing a trail beater that rarely sees paved roads, that's one end of the extreme. Then if you set the alignment and immediately drive your Honda five days in a row, two hours a day, and you're off just a bit, you're likely to fry your expensive tires before you know it. Most of us are somewhere in the middle. So, in other words, do your research, calculate your level of allowable error, and buyer beware, your miles may vary, and so on. This is a long video, but I'll put some shortcuts in the description to a few points in the video if you want to skip ahead. So just briefly I want to go over what makes up the alignment. And for the home alignment guy and girl these are the items that you need to know. And first of all there's toe in. This is probably the most important setting and when it's off can wear tires faster than a trip to the store. If you repair your suspension you need to set the toe at the minimum so you can drive it to the alignment shop. I'll cover just toe set here at the end of the video, but uh, let's move on. Next is camber. How much the tire tilts in and out from being completely vertical? We're talking one or two degrees max for most cars. Positive camber is where the top of the tire is out more than the bottom. Those stance cars have some ridiculous camber of 10 or 20 degrees negative. Street cars are close to zero. For the race car, we shoot for 1 to 3 degrees negative. And then there's caster. Think about a unicycle and a Harley chopper. The unicycle has zero caster. It's straight up and down. The chopper has 30 or more degrees of positive caster. Most cars will be in the 2 to 8 degree positive range, and it's a pretty large range of acceptable settings. Caster being off causes the car to pull to one side, or too little caster in vehicles like my Jeep can cause death wobble. So thrust angle. We've all seen the cars that dog walk down the highway. Imagine a center line drawn down the center of the front and rear axle. If the rear toe is set to the left or right of that center line, then the thrust angle is either negative or positive, respectively. Well, I wanted to talk real quick about the spreadsheet that I use for making this alignment. It has tabs for camber, caster, toe, and thrust, as well as one tab that pulls it all together and makes it easier to read. I'm still working on this, but at this point it does work. Because we're doing this without any special tools, we'll need the spreadsheet to calculate camber and caster and even toe. We've made this file available to you on the budgetoutlaws.com website. There'll be a link in the description below. Click on calculations for wheel alignments.xls. It's an Excel 2003 format. Should be pretty universal. As we go through the alignment process, we'll make notes on the spreadsheet and let it do the calculations for us. There is one other spreadsheet that we'll be using doing the uh, toe settings. And I'll put a link to that down there below as well. And I'll show you that when we get to it. So let's cover a couple of things on the, the work area. The car needs to be level. You can use a level to find the low spots and the high spots. If you're going to change parts, adjust ride height and so on, do this before the alignment. And also make sure your tires are aired up properly. Since every car is different, I'll describe my process and try and throw in some general comments. I start by taking all the readings. I want to know what the camber caster toe and thrust is be for the front and the back before I make any changes. And we'll start by checking camber. We'll take a 24 inch bubble level. A digital level is even more precise. We'll pick a spot at the top of the rim and another at the bottom of the rim and measure the distance between those two spots. On my 18 inch rim, the spots are about 19 inch. So you jot that down on your notepad and we'll transfer 
that to the spreadsheet along with the other measurements. Next, stand the level up next to the wheel. I hold the ruler at the bottom to get the level right at 2 inches from the bottom measuring point. And then making sure the bubble is in position, and it still reads 2 inches at the bottom, I measure the top point to the level. You can actually measure camber for all four wheels at this time. We'll check the toe and thrust when we set up the strings. Take the three measurements for each wheel and enter them into the camber tab of the spreadsheet. If you use 2 inch for the bottom measurement, then the only thing that will change is the top measurement, which for me makes it easy. I moved on to checking the front caster. My Porsche 914 was in a terrible wreck and I bought it in that condition. So I actually cut off the front section and welded a new one on. So I expected the alignment to be off by quite a bit. So in measuring caster, you need to get a turn plate or some way to measure the turn of the wheel in 20 degrees to take a camber measurement and then out 20 degrees and take another camber measurement. And that's about it right there. Okay, so there's four inches. And we're doing it to the. And it's right at five inches. So we've got an inch difference instead of the half that we were getting before. Quarter. You enter those measurements into the spreadsheet under the tab called caster. Okay, so now we know what the current camber is on all four corners, and we either know what the caster is, we can't read it, or we don't care right now. The last thing to measure is toe and thrust angle. We could set the toe without the string set up, but it's likely that the rear thrust will be off, and that's why we take these extra steps. Start by making sure the wheels are straight. As you start measuring, you may find you need to turn the wheel just a bit. For a four-wheel toe alignment, we'll set up strings parallel to the car. For my car, 73 inches apart is about right. And I'll take two pipes, rods, tubes, anything long and straight, place them on jack stands or something that will raise them up to the center point of the wheels. We'll measure off 73 inches or whatever works best for your car and mark it carefully. Tie the string around one end at that 73 inch mark and a weight of about a pound or so on the other end. The hard part now is moving the pipes so that we can get the strings an equal distance from the center lines of the wheels. So in other words, if one side is measuring 4 inch to the wheel hub, and the other side is 3 inch, we want to adjust the pipe and thus the strings over by one half inch. Once that is done, we can take some measurements. To measure for the toe and thrust angle, we want to measure from the outer edge of the front of each wheel to the string. Use a piece of paper or spreadsheet to record that measurement. And then measure from the rear of the wheel to the string and record that on the spreadsheet or the piece of paper. As part of our spreadsheet calculations, we'll use this online calculator from robrobinette.com for measuring toe using the string method. Enter the measurements on this calculator and you'll get the actual current front and rear toe settings as well as the thrust angle. The calculator states that the strings only need to be parallel to each other, not so much to the car, but I found that it's better to get them as close as possible. Note, two of the settings on the string calculator are asking for wheel diameter measurements where the toe readings are taken for the front of rear of each wheel. That's probably the same number we used earlier in the camber readings. For my car with 18 inch wheels, that number is 19. And lastly, it also asks for wheel base, which is the distance between the front and rear hubs. Uh, so on my car, that is 96.5 inches. When you click on the Calculate button in that spreadsheet, the calculator outputs degrees, not inches. 
But if you're like me and hate using degrees for toe measurements, here's the conversion calculator from, again, the Rob Robinette's website. These links are down below. And lastly, it doesn't like fractions. So there's, there's also a fraction to decimal calculator down there as well. Okay, so we have all the measurements. Now it's time to make adjustments. So maybe you'll get lucky and you will meet the specs of, of allowable ranges. If not, then normally we would adjust in this order. Rear camber, rear toe, and that also becomes thrust angle as well. And then we'll move to front and do front caster, camber, and then also toe. We'll start with the rear camber, but realizing that on my car, the bolts to hold the camber shims also adjust the toe. So we'll add and remove shims as necessary before we completely tighten it down. We'll adjust the toe as well. Our goal is to get the toe correct. Also, the thrust angle as close to zero as possible. After you make a change, you need to check it to make sure it's within specs. Then we move on to adjusting front camber and caster. On the 914, it's done at the top mounts and done at the same time. Again, recheck to make sure you're in allowable range. And then lastly is the front toe. And this is done on tie rod ends to the rack and pinion. And a tip to that is if the steering wheel is straight, then adjust the passenger side to make toe corrections. And make sure the total toe is right on. Save the tires. And you're done. Tighten everything down. It's easy to think that you're going to revisit something and leave it snug. That's not a good thing. Okay, camber, caster, and toe is set. Take it for a drive and see if it's driving okay. Not pulling to one side or another, not tracking the grooves of the road, or anything else that might feel weird. Lastly, check your tires. What's the tire tread depth? Is there feathering or wear? Then after you've driven it a few miles, check it again. If there's a problem, you'll see something on the tires. If it seems like it's good, then drive it a bit more and check it again. When I say check it, I mean look at the tires to see if they're feathering or wearing uneven or anything. Alright, postscript. Now somebody is thinking about this. What if I just need to adjust the front toe, and I'm pretty sure the rest is okay. I change the outer tie rod end or something like that. Here is a method of quickly checking the toe in. And we'll call that the set the toe and let it go. Get two straight edges. I use an old bracket from a shelf that I took down. Make sure they are straight and long enough so they stick out from both sides of the front wheels. Use blocks of wood to raise them off the ground and get them away from the tire bulge. Press them up against the tire, but don't raise them up so high that you can't get a straight shot with the tape measures. That's the next step. Using two tape measures and with a buddy on the other side, measure the distance between the front and rear. You want the front to be slightly smaller measurement than the rear. Adjust the tie rod end until you have 1 16th to 3 16th toe in. Front measurements smaller than the rear measurements. Tighten it down. And you're good. Drive it to the alignment shop or do the full alignment as we've just discussed. There's a whole bunch of tools that I that I wanted to recommend. Uh, I'll put those in, in links down in the description. And that's if you want to just spend a little more or if you're doing this often and you want, want some easy equipment to work with. I personally bought the rim clamp and the digital angle gauge. If I was doing it over, I'd probably buy the bubble camber gauge that uh, Long Anger sells. All in all, this works. You don't have to buy all that stuff. It's just nice. Well, thanks for staying with me this long. Hope this helps. Have any questions, leave a comment down below or send me an email. Well, thanks for watching and especially thanks to all the new subscribers. We're working on getting this better. 
Y'all stay safe and God bless.